a pleasure to see so many of you. I've been with the museum now for 10 years, eight years as its president. And as I'm looking around, it's very gratifying to find that I recognize so many of you. So many of you have been with us on this journey in partnership with our programming, with us as we have sought to elevate this museum. As Stan was saying, the African American Museum in Philadelphia was the first museum built by a municipality to serve and celebrate African American heritage. Now that's not to say that we were the first African American museum, but what it says is that Philadelphia made an investment, made a commitment to celebrating its African American heritage. Now this aligned with our bicentennial celebration, but in the subsequent decades, we have made a significant imprint on this region. And I'm happy to say that we are on a trajectory of success. Our audience continues to increase. Our programming is more robust than ever. And so much of that is due to our partnership with so many organizations and due to the steadfast support that we receive from people like you and, of course, from our board. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge Dr. Corte, who is a member of our board. And also, uh, Lowell Thomas, a member of our board. We've got Dr. Samantha Butts, a former member of the board, and Sam Schroeder, who was also a former member of the board. So we're in good stead. We've had good people working with us, for us, and in collaboration with us for a long, long time. But I'm especially pleased tonight to welcome the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs and all of our friends because I think tonight is going to be a special night as we recognize Councilwoman Blackwell for everything that she does and has done. Now, the African American Museum's mission is to bring diverse communities together in celebration of the African experience the black experience. But we underline the idea of bringing diverse communities together. We have from the very beginning, from 1976 when we were first established, underlined, underscored our commitment to the African diaspora. So it has always been very important for us, always been a priority for us to have this close working relationship with the leaders of the community with organizations representing the community and of course our elected officials. Councilwoman Blackwell has been very special to us. She has been a steadfast supporter. She is one of those council people that I can count on walking through the doors. She knows what's going on. She knows what's going on with the museum. She knows the challenges that we face but she also celebrates our successes. And I can't tell you how much we've appreciated that. Your leadership, your commitment, your active engagement. So thank you so much. So as you're here tonight, we always like to share with you what we're doing. We have several programs going on uh, that we always want to share with you, but we also have an exhibit that we'd like to share. It's called In Conversation, and it's talking about black male masculinity. And the whole conversation around black male identity, as you know, is a very rich one. We have 55 female photographers who've been engaged in that conversation. So we hope that during your visit here tonight, you're going to take the time to uh, walk through our galleries, visit that exhibit, we have Ivan Henderson, who is our Vice President of Programming, ready to lead you on a tour. I think you can do that while you're, you're serving, your, while you're getting your meal. A lot of you know Ivan, because Ivan, as well, is that person that sits at the table with you all. He has attended uh, these meetings regularly, and he is that person that leads our programming, especially around our programming for children and students, and our partnerships with Akana and other groups. So you'll recognize Ivan when you see him. Please enjoy that tour. 
please consider becoming a member of the museum as well. As much as we celebrate our partnership, we always, always need your support. And you all are politically savvy people. You know if we are able to say our membership is growing, someone's going to hear that because that means that we represent a constituency. Ivan, you're sitting there. I didn't even know you were there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can raise your hand. I was talking about it. So, we hope that you understand that by joining the museum, you help grow our constituency, help grow our influence and our impact. So, thank you for letting us be part of this very special evening. We think it's the only appropriate place to have this kind of conversation. But again, let's celebrate Councilwoman Blackwell for everything she's done for us Thanks. and everyone else in the community. Thanks. Can I ask Senator Street to bring some remarks, please? He's, uh, he's a charter member of this commission also, including all the other stuff that he does in Los Commonwealth. So thank you very much, Senator. Um, I just so pleased to be here with all of you and humbled that I'm speaking at an event honoring Councilwoman Janie Blackwell. Uh, Councilwoman Blackwell has done a remarkable work for our community for a period of time um, that really laid the foundation for all the work that all of us are doing, whether we're doing it as activists or elected officials at the city, state, and federal level. Um, she has been a person who was who first said that it was important that the city of Philadelphia recognize the contributions of African and Caribbean people to, uh, throughout, the, from, throughout the diaspora on the impact of the life of Philadelphians, both culturally and economically. Um, she took her concept and words into action, uh, authoring the legislation that created the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs, um, and made sure that my father was going to sign it in the law. <laughs> But then not only that, she became a champion to make sure that the commission was staffed, to make sure that meetings were held, uh, to make sure that people, the various communities were engaged and that work was done and that there was a substantive product. And every time there was an issue of critical importance to people from throughout the diaspora, whether it's the education of black and brown children here in the city, or whether we're immig immigrant issues with our immigrants coming over, and reminded people that there were black and that there were black immigrants too, and were and we're not just Asians and Latinos changes in our immigration policy. She reminded us, made sure that we were we understood the positive economic contributions, whether it were small restaurants throughout West Philadelphia that were that were helping to enrich the uh, cultural aspect of attracting students to Penn and Drexel and institutions like that, or whether we're larger institutions like the fact that we brought in, as you've heard me talk about, $4 billion worth of cocoa beans annually from West Africa, primarily from Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, which supports not only the port economy of Philadelphia, but the agricultural economy throughout the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Indeed, uh, our analysis suggests that 66 out of Pennsylvania's 67 counties are at least in somewhat dependent on African cocoa beans coming in because the cocoa beans support the port here in Philadelphia. They support, and they, all, and, and they support uh, port industry throughout Delaware County and Philadelphia counties. But moreover, they support the chocolate manufacturing in central Pennsylvania and then all of the milk that is produced to support that chocolate. And, and, and chocolate is the only added value dairy product that's growing. And that is, and, and so when you get to it, it really every county except for Allegheny County where Pittsburgh sits, every other county in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is in part dependent on African cocoa beans. And that doesn't get into the fact that shea butter and other products. She reminded us that us Africans and that African and people of the African diaspora that we are contributing not only historically and what we did to make this country great, but today the contributions of Africans and African Americans help make this country, this commonwealth strong. Uh, and so this commission um, at Philadelphia has given birth to the commonwealth now recognizing it, and we're gonna have an Africa Trade Institute, Pennsylvania Africa Trade Institute, housed at Temple University that stands working on with uh, Dr. Bolofi Asante, 
and in honor of Councilwoman Blackwell, because of her fierce advocacy to us in Harrisburg, Senator Hughes and I have secured $100,000 to start the trade wow. institute. But I'll tell you, it is because of the work that the councilwoman is doing. And $100,000 is a good start, but it's just a start. We're going to do much more, including uh, what we've got commitments from the Commonwealth uh, the Departments of Agriculture, Commerce, and the City of Commerce Department to work on a trade mission and to formally acknowledge uh, trade relationships between the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the continent of Africa. The only continent that Pennsylvania does not have a trade, a formal trade relationship with, and indeed probably the continent that does the most for us in terms of economics, because I don't think there's any other continent we're bringing in uh, a product that impacts every county except for one in the way that we do from Africa. So our so thank you, Council, for making us not only thank proud you, you. that we were to be uh, African people but also to recognize the reasons that we should be proud and to make sure that every other community recognizes our contributions, both historically and into the present. I also want to acknowledge the presence of my senior advisor, Sister Natifa Shakir, um, who's been And uh, she has, since I've been senator, I've missed some of these meetings and I can't always stay, but she stays at all the meetings is completely committed and I want to thank her for the work she's doing. And again tonight I do have to go be with another community as well, but this is uh, Latifa will be here at some place around here, my district director, Brother Henry Hunter, who is usually avoiding the spotlight, is also in the room and will remain as well. Brother Henry, I know you're in the room someplace, you can see the steps, uh, but he's a brother about doing the work and not about getting the credit, but uh, I appreciate Sister Latifa for not only doing the work, but somebody's got to stand up and uh, make sure that we're, re we're represented, and she, she does that in a very regal way. So thank you all, thank each and every one of you for the work you're doing. We know most, almost none of you are, are financially compensated for this work, but the Creator will bless us. Uh, and, 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 uh, and indeed, there's a saying, Native American saying, that we remember this, we don't inherit the earth from our uh, parents, but we borrow it from our children, and our children will be glad that we're being good caretakers of the legacy we borrow from them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. November 12th, 2019, African American, Philadelphia. Uh, in addition to, uh,